It is a well-known fact that semi-automatic firearms recoil less than an equivalent manually repeating one. And as often happens with well-known facts, this one is not true. Let's try to understand better what recoil really is and if we can do something to mitigate it. I will also show you how much of a push you get from a 762 rifle by letting my friend Guy shoot a few rounds while sitting on a wheelchair. I recently published a video called 5 Commonly Believed Gun Facts That Are Not True and one of the facts was that different inner workings of a gun can reduce or even eliminate recoil. The comment section of said video got quickly flooded with comments regarding existing mechanical systems that are supposed to eliminate recoil, mostly the AK-107. Those systems do, in fact, work. The point is that their job is not eliminating the recoil of the shot, which would be physically impossible, but the shaking of the action. Let me show you what I mean with a practical experiment. I am taking this FAL rifle for my tests, which is ideal because its action can be easily changed from semi-automatic to straight pull just by turning this piece 180 degrees. What it does is it closes the gas vent, preventing it from pushing on the gas piston and hence completely disabling the automatic mechanism. The first thing that I want to do is measure the velocity at which the gun recoils in both cases of semi-automatic and manual operation. I asked for my friend Guy's help to fit the rifle to a rest and tie everything on top of a wheelchair so that the whole thing can move freely under recoil. This is of course not a properly scientific experiment, but it's going to work for our purposes. I'm writing the calculated final recoil velocities of the whole contraption on screen. As of the time of recording this, I haven't yet done the numbers, but I already know that they are going to be very similar and the difference is only due to experimental inconsistencies. Otherwise, I would have found a violation of the conservation of momentum and won a Nobel Prize. Unfortunately, this is not the case. The final recoil velocity is the same as expected by Newtonian mechanics. The reason is that a system which doesn't exchange forces with the outside world, like our shooting wheelchair contraption, keeps its linear momentum constant. Therefore, once a bullet is thrown out of the barrel, the rest of the system acquires, as a whole, an opposite momentum exactly identical to that of the expelled mass. That overall momentum, if the wheelchair was totally unaffected by external forces, cannot change no matter what happens inside the system. So the gun action has absolutely no effect on the final recoil velocity of the weapon. Yet, when I shot that same rifle while holding it, I could definitely feel a different recoil sensation and same thing probably happened to you. Why is that? Let's give a closer look at the first frames of the FAL shooting in the two configurations. When the gas system is closed, and hence the bolt remains locked for the whole time, the rifle reaches its top velocity very rapidly, in less than one frame. When the gas system is instead open, we see a delay. In the first few frames, the bolt is moving very quickly backwards, while the stock moves very slowly. As time passes, the bolt slows down and the stock accelerates, until finally reaching the same velocity of the closed bolt configuration. By the end of the cycle, the total momentum transferred to the body of the rifle and to the wheelchair is exactly the same, but the way the momentum is transferred over time is different. This is the core of the problem. What the action can do is changing the timescale over which the momentum is transferred to the shooter or the wheelchair in my case. You can trade the short push of a strong force with the longer push of a smaller force, but can do nothing to change their product. And this also means that any other way of delaying recoil momentum transfer will work the same, like shock absorbing stocks or pads, which are simpler and cheaper to implement than making sophisticated actions. Then why did they invent the AK-107 counterweight system? Turns out that sometimes, especially when using low recoiling calibers like the 545 by 39 with relatively heavy reciprocating masses, the effect of the bolt carrier group movement actually overwhelms the dynamics of the system and instead of slowly transferring the momentum to the rifle, it generates oscillations. The recoil of the cartridge is now the lesser evil. In the case of the AK-74, the momentum of the shot, including propellant, is somewhere around 4 newton seconds, while the momentum given to the bolt carrier group by the gas system is about double that amount. Basically, the rifle body shakes wildly back and forth at each shot, which is undesirable, especially for full auto accuracy. Luckily though, masses moving inside the system can be counteracted by other internal masses, and that's the whole point of the AK-107 system, as well as the piston arrangement in engines. If I couple my system to a mechanism that has the same dynamic response but is running in opposition of phase, I can, theoretically, completely eliminate the shaking due to action cycling. This is quite a big deal, but it's not really compensating for the bullet momentum in any way. The reason why the AK-107 has very little recoil is simply because it uses a very lightweight bullet, but with its counterweight system it eliminates the shaking which you would otherwise have in a regular AK-74. 
These dedicated systems are not common though, since usually satisfying results can be obtained by tweaking the cycling of the action without adding too much complexity. One last thing that I want to show, which is just a simple experiment, is trying what you saw on the thumbnail. I got my friend Guy on the wheelchair shooting the rifle to see how much a push he really gets. Feet off the ground. He trusts me less than Maurice yeah. though, so he refused to do that on top of the bench and was sitting on the middle one so that he would not fall. There is a there slight a movement. Bit movement there. Yeah. He was keeping his feet off the ground and shot five rounds in sequence, but didn't really go anywhere. This gives us insight on another physical amount, which is recoil energy. The heavier the mass of the recoiling system, the lower its kinetic energy will be. After eating Italian food for a few months, Guy is heavy enough to get such a small amount of recoil energy that even the relatively low resistance of the wheels, together with the tiny slope, are large enough to prevent him from moving more than an inch. The recoil energy of the freestanding rifle would be much higher, but it is dissipated in the impact with Guy's shoulder. Anyway, I really hope you learned something new. I will be answering your questions in the comments, so ask without worries. Help me understand if you liked the video with the thumbs up or down buttons, and subscribe if you'd like to see more. I'll see you next time. Bye. Well, I'll tell you what, Carlo. A Raspberry Ripper won't be using this anymore, my old son.